it is time for the conclusion of Night Quest, as we cover Shadow of the Bat, issue 28, and, Rob and Robin, volume 2, number 7. The Shadow of the Bat issue is written by Alan Grant, with pencils by Brett Blevins, inks by Bob Smith, colors by Adrian Roy, and lettering by Todd Klein. Or Klein sorry. Robin, number 7, has story by Chuck Dixon, pencils by Tom Grummet, inks by Rye Cressing. Colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by Aldbert de Guzman, and is edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Denny O'Neill. Shadow of the Bat 28 starts as Jean-Paul reflects on letting Abattoir die, and he's very blasé about it, as we previously encountered. At GCPD, there's considerably more concern. With Abattoir's death, they lost their only lead to Graham Etchison's location. Gordon has major crimes scour the city to find Etchison, though Bullock suspects he's already dead. Ultimately, it's Montoya who spots the clues, revealing the warehouse where Edison was held, and in turn, his body. Gordon gets the call and turns on the bat signal. When Azrael arrives, Gordon just lets him have it. He berates him for what he did, calling it tantamount to murder. Gordon makes it clear that he knows Azrael is not the Batman he knew previously. When Gordon says he'd do it again, Gordon lunges at Azrael. Azrael dodges and grabs Gordon before he falls off the roof, and then rubs his new lack of resistance to murder in Gordon's face. I hope this is important. It is. I want to know who you are. I know you're not Batman, not the one who's looked out for the city, not the one I know. What makes you so sure? What makes you so sure? The Batman I know, not that I know him very well, would never bring dishonor to the cause he serves. Batman would never commit murder. Are you implying I would? I'm saying you have. You left Avatar to die in that foundry. And because he did die, we had no way to find Graham Escheson until now. Let me quote from Detective Montoya's report. Escheson was in some kind of homemade torture machine. Death must have taken several hours and caused intense pain. So, what's your point? So one man died. Against that death weigh this. Abattoir has already slaughtered at least 25 people. His insanity was incurable. He seems to escape from jail at will. How many more do you think he'd have killed? I didn't murder him. I left him to die so the decent folk of Gotham will never, need never fear him again. That's not your decision to make. We have a system of law. Which the Batman has always worked outside of. I still do. Your rules do not apply to me. Are you telling me? You'll kill again? I'm telling you I'll carry out my mission. My crusade. Using whatever means I deem fit. Does human life mean nothing to you, you cold, calculating... Ah! On the contrary, Commissioner. Human life means everything to me. Decent human life. If what you say was true, Commissioner, I'd let you fall your death now. Unless one of us changes his attitude, the friction between us can only grow. Understand this. I am the Batman. I will always be the Batman. And I will cleanse the city my way. As Azrael leaves, Gordon pulls a gun on Azrael, aiming at his back. But he can't bring himself to shoot, before ultimately smashing the bat signal with the butt of his gun. After thoroughly wrecking a gang, Azrael returns to the Batcave to plan further modifications to his suit. Robin number seven begins with Tim having crashed on his bed and in his costume after returning from patrol, forcing him to scramble to cover this whole situation when the housekeeper brings in fresh clothes. Tim showers and gets dressed, and then he and Bruce meet Jack Drake's plane at the airport. While they're at arrivals, Bruce mentions to Tim that he's planning to continue his retirement. So... Uh, once Jack has been drop, dropped off and has settled in, Tim tells Bruce, um, so about that. Tim, you're saying he killed Abattoir? And all this, why didn't you tell me? I thought I'd left things in capable hands, but this... You couldn't have done anything, and then you started talking about retiring? I had to know. I left you here as my conscience, Tim. You were supposed to handle any problems. But I'm not you. I tried going up against him once and he nearly killed me. He sealed the bat cave. He's even had some run-ins with the police. You say he sealed the cave. 
every entrance I know of, then we make an entrance. As a quick aside, I appreciate that Bruce isn't using the entrance he's going to use in the climax of Night's End. In any case, this leads to Bruce and Robin going to the Batcave and confronting Azrael. You tripped the alarms. What are you doing here, Wayne? Look at you. You look like what you've become. A monster. You have a valid reason for coming here? Yes, I do. I'm taking back the mantle of the bat before you spill any more blood on it. You don't deserve it. You never did. You left me with a city to protect. I did as I saw fit. How many lives would have been spared but for your sufferance of animals like Abattoir, or Poison Ivy, or the Riddler, or the Joker? Maybe it's you who never deserved to wear this cowl, Wayne. I've heard about just about enough, Paul. Not Paul. Never again. I am the Batman. I will always be the Batman. And no one, saint or devil, can take it from me. Azrael overpowers Bruce before leaving in the Batmobile. Robin gives chase in the Redbird, but Azrael is more willing to endanger the public, so Robin backs off. Tim and Bruce discuss this. and Bruce decides he needs to go to Lady Shiva to get the rest off, as the issue and night quest ends. These issues are great. I love how in both these stories we get our long, much long-awaited confrontations with Azrael in different ways. We've seen how all of this has gotten under Gordon's skin for issues now. And it's now finally come to a head with Abattoir's death and, in turn, the death of Escheson. We've seen Gordon's wriggling, lingering doubts, so it's cathartic to see that all come out in the open, even if Gordon himself isn't satisfied with the conclusion. Then, to cap all that off, we have Bruce confronting Azrael and making clear that he has had enough, and he is out to take the mantle of the back bat, mantle of the bat back. And on top of that, I absolutely love, love, that all these decades of criticism, because clearly we've been going on for quite some time at this point, and this is just in the 90s, from comics readers who can't stand Batman because he just won't kill the Joker and demands to know why he won't just off him, and to put those words into the mouth of Azrael, the person who we've seen to be most unworthy of being Batman at this point, and is the worst possible person to be making these statements. Would you consider it petty to put the pet criticisms of criticism that you hate in the mouth of the character that the reader is supposed to loathe? Yes. On the other hand, well, Ash has been written as the kind of grimdark, nihilistic, edgelord Batman that you get when you pick all these arguments and follow them and give them give the people who make them what they want. Because he's the character who because it's the character who they say they want. They want a Batman who is dark. He was also, he was, yes, dark and brooding, because it is dark and brooding. He does have legitimate cause to brood with his background and not, um, his parents are also dead, but under much different circumstances and felt that he was denied a proper childhood. Um, and like he is a, and in a lot of respects, there is a flawed and interesting character. There's a reason why we got Asriel's stories after the end of the Nightfall Saga, why he didn't dis just disappear into the void. Uh, he's written well as a character, but when all said and done, the point, because this really encapsulates in total that the point of the Nightfall Saga to here, like particularly Night's Quest, is that when all said and done, yes, this dark and brooding character is what you say you want, but now we give it to you, and we've given it to you in possibly the best possible execution of that form. Um, the, this is a competently written, well-written stories with interesting, engaging characters with, um, which with depictions of the villains that stay true to the villains in their history with the supporting cast remaining true to the supporting cast of Batman and what they're supposed to do and telling the audience, you got what you want. Do you like it? And the answer is, no, it doesn't work as Batman. And so it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like Poochie doing the overly cool over the top thing and saying, Hey, 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 here's, here's everything you want. Here's all the candy you want and all the, the junk foods. No, I don't like this. Um, but it, 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 it provided in a negative 
poorly executed form, though they did their best possible way of making Asbat an interesting and engaging character, but again, in the context of all this edgelord crap that has been spouted about Batman for almost again, almost certainly at this point, decades here. There's good parts of the character and there's reasons why after the story ends, he will continue to like, exist in Batman comics. But this really encapsulates, I'm repeating myself a bit here, but it bears repeating even just here. This is the core thesis of everything up to here. This is what you wanted. Turns out you don't actually want it. And we, and, and I'm not, and we're not saying this to you. We're proving to you and we're getting, and we have the traction from you in our letters column to make it clear that this is the case that no, you didn't want this. Even when you said you did, once you got it and you got it in the best, best possible form, you didn't actually want. It. So next time night quest has ended night's end begins. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.